nothing more to report. With regard to food shortage, yes, we did re- re- talk about food shortages. And, uh, and it's going to be real. The, the price of these sanctions is not just imposed upon Russia. It's imposed upon an awful lot of countries as well, including European countries and our country as well. Welcome, Welcome to the Crypto, crypto teacher. teacher. And guys, you know, I come back with that video just to make you think. And guys, we are Biden speaking of food shortages. And you guys know I done a video on a few weeks ago letting you know that Russia and Ukraine handle 66% of the wheat and oats for the globe. Remember, the New World Order works on problem, reaction, solution. They create the problem. They wait for the reaction, and then they run in with the solution. We're going to have an energy crisis, a food crisis, a housing crisis, all created by money printing, and then also using money as a weapon. But we know all this was planned out a long time ago. And we know the crypto teacher wrote about it, detailed it from beginning to end. The New World Order created the problem. Did all this money printing, which is causing crisis across the globe. Now what they're going to do is raise the rates. It's going to choke off the economy. It's going to get rid of all this inflation. But what is it going to do? put a lot of people out of work so they can run in with the robots, algorithms, and drones, which is going to cause hyperdeflation. And guys, when we know the robots, algorithms, and drones hit the economy, because the only thing we have to do is look at Japan. Your consumer is taken out of the picture. That's the reason why if we follow the money, follow all the corporations, where are they going? To China, Africa. Because that emerging market, those people are going to be coming out of poverty into the middle class. They're going to have money to spend. Remember what Blackstone said. In America, it's going to be 10 years with no growth. Remember, the United States is the last country of freedom. And you can see us running right into socialism. Universal basic income. And the people are going to fall for it. They're going to airdrop that free money, tell you what, when, and where, and how to buy. And you have six months to spend or poof, it's gone. Remember David from R3. And the sheet will be in the virtual world of metaverse. But for right now, they're going to play the Hegelian dialectic. We know cryptos are the future. But you're going to hear the yin and the yang from all types of media. Get yourself educated on the actual technology. Ukraine and Russia is nothing but a distraction for the rise of China. And that digital yuan backed by that digital SDR. And remember the crypto teacher told you because he knows. When it comes to the new world order, it's all planned out. You have a wonderful day. You know, we are at an inflection point, I believe, in the world economy. Not just the world economy, in the world. It occurs every three or four generations. As one of as the uh, one of the top military people said to me in a secure meeting the other day, 60, 60 million people died between 1900 and 1946, and uh, since then we established a liberal world order, and that hadn't happened in a long while. A lot of people dying, but nowhere near the chaos. And now is a time when things are shifting. We're going to there's going to be a new world order out there. And we've got to lead it. And we've got to unite the rest of the free world in doing it. So anyway. Just another interesting moment. Uh, it's going to be real, said President Biden. And that's pretty much fact right now. There's going to be a major squeeze on a lot of global commodities. We talk about energy all the time. But when it comes to those grains that feed the world, it is going to be a real struggle. And so when I was on the phone with you and yes. all this change, I, I mentioned that this is one of the issues I'm sure that they're going to talk about because there are real national security implications to hunger around the world. If you remember the Arab, uh, Arab Spring, a lot of people might remember that and say, oh, that was about Twitter, right? Mm-hmm. No. The, the wheat prices had gone up so much, and there was so much frustration. When you have problems like food costs going up this much, you will have uprisings. Uprisings lead to what? Emigration and also famine and starvation. So it's not only the grain that's a huge problem, but also many farmers all around the world get their fertilizer from Russia and this Record area high of the world. Prices. So our farmers are about to do their plantings in the next four weeks. If they don't get enough fertilizer... We're not going to have enough food here either. This is a very real problem. Apparently, NATO has talked about it. 
And it, it is something that everyone has to think about, not just because there's a moral obligation to make sure people have enough food, but there's a national security implication as well. Everyone else, there are thousands of other cryptocurrencies out there. I recently spoke with Michael Saylor of MicroStrategy, the world's biggest corporate holder of Bitcoin, as far as we know, and asked if we're going to see massive consolidation in this market, how many cryptocurrencies actually exist five years from now. Take a listen to what he had to say. This is a rotation from an entrepreneurial driven industry to an institutionally driven industry. And we're sitting at this point where we're crossing the chasm. And the question is, which, in, which entrepreneurs will be institutionalized and come public? There will be a shakeout. And obviously, 6,500 crypto currencies are not going to be around here in a decade. What do you think the crypto industry looks like in five years? How many cryptocurrencies actually survive and, and which ones are they? Yeah, look, I, I think that he's dead on, right? Anytime you have brand new technology of tons of intellectual capital and financial capital flowing into an industry like this, uh, you're going to get a lot of folks who are experimenting. They're trying things. But the truth is that most of them don't last. And if we go back to the late 90s as an example, all the ideas were right, streaming music, food delivery, et cetera. But those first iterations, most of them did not work. And it took another decade before the infrastructure was in place. People understood the technologies. There was the consumer behavior uh, kind of transition. And I think the same thing is going to happen here. Now, the beauty of this is something like Bitcoin specifically as a digital currency. This is not the first attempt at, at this. For over 40 years, the cypherpunk movement has been trying to create digital currency. And finally, on iteration 8, 9, 10, whatever Bitcoin ended up being, now it is actually struck and is receiving global adoption. The same thing is likely to happen in many of these other ideas. It's just going to take a while for us to Markets generally. I'm curious about the private markets here. You had been tweeting about the Board at Yacob Club um, creator, Yuga Labs, raising $450 million in a seed round, a big seed round. Why do you think that the private space is garnering so much money, and what do you think about the private valuations here? I think there's two things happening. One, if you're investing in bonds, you're losing. If you're holding cash, you're losing. So people have to go to the private market. They have to push out on the risk curve. That's exactly what they're doing. The second thing is this is a generational trait. If you want to get asymmetric returns, you have to go and invest in Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. You have to invest in the infrastructure. You have to invest in the liquid assets. And that's what every single great investor is doing. And so the ones that are still sitting out from this market, frankly, they're just going to be left behind. And I think that uh, seeing this $450 million round is a perfect example. If you look at the Yuga Labs financials, they're mind blown. These guys are operating with a 92% margin. Their company is less than two years old, and they've got nine figures of revenue. Anybody on the planet who would see those types of financial uh, metrics would be excited about investing in this type of business with this type of momentum. And so I think that there's plenty of people who point at the industry. They laugh. They don't understand it. Uh, but what I do know is that the world's wealthiest people, not the future wealthiest, the world's wealthiest people today are crypto investors. And my guess is that over time, the Force 400 is going to be dominated by Bitcoin and crypto investors. And so if you want to be part of that, you should get into the industry. What about the long term? What happens to Bitcoin? What is Bitcoin? What does the market look like five years out? We, we talked to Mike Novogratz about that, Galaxy Digital. Take a quick listen to what he has to say. The whole year I thought we'd be a 30,000, 50,000 range uh, in Bitcoin. Risk to the upside, not the downside. Um, but I think, you know, five years out, if Bitcoin's not at 500,000, I'm wrong on the adoption cycle, uh, right? We see an adoption cycle that accelerates. Uh, Bitcoin grew so much faster yeah. last year, crypto grew, than the internet did in its best years in the 90s. Spencer, is it at $500,000 in five years? 500,000 exactly. I'm not really sure. And look, Novo and I might disagree on many different points, but um, I agree with him here. I think that people overthink um, Bitcoin and crypto as a whole um, quite often. I mean, realistically, I think the easiest thing to do here to do well is to have a long term time horizon. You know, what's going to happen in any particular day, week, month, or even year um, is extraordinarily uncertain. Um, and a lot of people, I think, prefer to uh, do themselves brain damage trying to anticipate those market moves when I think the easier solution here is to have a small percentage of your portfolio and orient towards the long term. And that could be just Bitcoin or it could be a basket of crypto assets. We're going to a different economy and we're going to be learning more about that uh, as we go. But clearly, we're, we're, we're learning that things can be done 
uh, from remote, remote locations. We're learning that technology can replace people even more than we thought. We're not going back to the same economy. We're going, we're recovering, but to a different economy. And it'll be one that is more leveraged to technology. And I worry that that is going to make it even more difficult than it was for, for many workers. In Silicon Valley and my friends who work in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing workers, we are now going to do to the retail workers, the call center workers, the fast food workers, the truck drivers, and then even bookkeepers, accountants, uh, insurance agents, lawyers, and on and on through the economy. So what happened to the manufacturing workers is a very clear sign. This effort, and China has big plans for this. They intend to seed um, their digital yuan into the global environment by giving it away to visitors at next winter's Olympics. When they arrive at the airport, they're going to get di yuan digital wallets. They're going to receive digital yuan. They're going to use it uh, throughout their visits to Beijing, and then they're going to take it back to their own countries. They see this as a huge advantage. Why? Because who controls the underlying protocols, who un controls the underlying standards of the future of money will control the future of money. The most powerful person in the world is the storyteller. The storyteller sets the vision, values, and agenda of an entire generation to come, Steve Jobs. And guys, you know I truly believe in this. When you look at the New World Order, they're the storytellers, and that's the reason why I wrote my New World Order book. But guys, now it's time to change the current generation. And I wrote three kids' books. You know I love the Trinity because I understand the power that's in it. So I have three books. We have an opportunity to change the generation, to educate, not just me, but I want to show you that I take action on a daily basis. And I want you to take action on a daily basis, whether it's your job, whether it's in your community. We have an opportunity right now to educate the masses. I posted this on my Twitter account. Please share. But this is a short clip of the three books. There's going to be a clothing line and action figure. Please get these books for your kids, nephews, cousins, friends. So therefore, we can start the re-education now. Because as we see, the fourth industrial revolution foundation is definitely here. Robots, algorithms, drones, taking humanity out the picture. We have to re-educate. But let's get into the video. Part 1. King Joshua and Grandma Tim save the village. Part 2. King Joshua and Grandma Tim save New York. Long COVID-33. Part 3. King Joshua and Grandma Tim goes to China. It's mandatory to get Part 1, Part 2, and Part 3 of this series. It's time to re-educate Generation Z.